Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to some Risk of Rain 2 modded. We are jumping in again. I played this game on the channel a little bit in the past, both vanilla and modded, but with sort of the rebrand of the channel and the new thumbnails and things we've been doing, I thought it'd be a good time to jump back into some Risk of Rain, as well as just having a few people ask for it back. So today we're going to jump in, yeah, to some modded Risk of Rain 2. I am running a lot and a lot of mods. If you do want to have the same mod list as me, my Thunderstar link thing, whatever you want to call it, code, will be in the description. Uh, but yeah, we're using a lot of different new difficulties, new item mods, new artifacts, tons of new characters, loads of new skills, loads of new skins, all sorts of good stuff. We are really having a good time with the amount of mods we have going on right now. I thought today I'd stick with some basic stuff in terms of the characters and go with the commander, but with some modded skills, we've got the heavy bullets, the phase beam, the jink jet and the plasma grenades. I thought that'd be a pretty interesting little loadout for us to try out today. And we're going to jump in on Thunderstorm difficulty with some additional difficulty scaling. Not quite as hard as Monsoon, um, but I do like the extra added bit of difficulty. Because uh, for those of you that haven't played Risk of Rain before, this game is, um, for for uh, for one thing, it's like one of the best 3D um, roguelikes in my experience. But um, this game gets more difficult the longer you play it. The longer you take on each stage, the harder things are going to get. So you've really got to try and be fairly speedy. But yeah, jumping right into the thick of it, right into the heat of it. And you can probably see some of you that have already played Risk of Rain, either vanilla or some of you maybe even modded haven't seen this mod called Stage Aesthetics, which basically turns some of the stages from the regular looking way. Like this this area normally looks kind of green and, and bluish, whereas now it's like very, very, uh, very, very different turn in sort of how it looks. It's really, really cool. It just adds some variety to the game. We've also got the ability for stages to be flipped and mirrored as well, which also adds some variety. I just think that's pretty fun. Let's try out our mouse 2 ability here. Ooh, I like that. A little bit of pushback. So, uh, for those of you that haven't played Risk of Rain before, essentially... Ooh, can we shoot these things? No. Um... Essentially, this game is uh, a race to the end, as you can see at the top there. It says our difficulty is on easy, and that will slowly but surely climb and get harder and harder. So you've got to kind of be speedy, as I said. And you run around the stages looking for chests and items, and you loot those items to get more powerful. Items can stack on top of one another. Um, and then you find a teleporter event to summon the boss, which takes you then to the next area. It's pretty damn cool. I like it. Uh, we're going to take this off the bat here, see what this item is. Increase a random stat. We can hover over to see what stat. And we got plus 10% maximum HP. That's not bad. It's not the best in the world, but it's not bad. We'll use some of these grenades here. These grenades can't hurt me, can they? I don't think they can. They do ignite, which is kind of nice. But yeah, I'm liking this uh, I'm liking this heavy ability here. As I said as well, you can also see that I'm using a UI overhaul. So some of you may be unfamiliar with how the UI looks here. And oh, the little jink jets are rather nice as well. It's been a little while since I played Risk of Rain. So I don't think there's been many updates to the actual vanilla game. But there's been a lot of updates to the mods that I used to use. And I've added a lot of mods since then. I'm using about 250 mods here. So there's a lot of things. There's actually a lot of mods that are just like skins and fixes and really small things. But we've got a good few content mods in there as well. And here's the teleporter event that I was talking about. So once we activate that, we can um, we can then kill the boss. Uh, we've got gasoline. When we kill an enemy, it will ignite enemies around it on fire. Pretty nice. I'm just quickly searching around here to see if there's any other chests. I do have some mods on that make it so that like chests are, are highlighted so they're a bit easier to see. Because this game does have some visibility issues here and there. So it's nice to have a little bit of helping a hand. Ooh, what's this anvil do? Um, I, I've never seen the anvil before. I can't do anything with it right now. Maybe it repairs your drones. I think there was a drone over here, wasn't there? Yeah, there's a drone here. Let's Let's grab that and see if it repairs them. So this drone is just a gunner drone. You can see its health there in the, in the top left. It'll just fly around and help us to kill things. I'm imagining that's what it does. Well, it still doesn't pop up with a, a little notification of what I can do with it. We've got a little try shop here. Um, I don't know what that item is. There's a lot of modded items I don't actually recognize here. Inflict, uh, um, infect enemies on contact for three seconds, causing them to receive 30% extra damage. So walk into enemies. Oh, that's pretty cool. I don't know how useful that's going to end up being, just because I don't know how often I'm going to be wanting to walk into enemies, but I guess it's nice to have. We've got some elites here. Elites can come in different elemental varieties. We do have some modded elites. At them two there, the little cloud guys, were uh, modded elites there. I have a utility chest. Got some extra healing. That can be like healing or movement speed. The little purple chests, that's, that's what they are. 
Got anything down here? No. Ooh, hello, big boy. The good thing is we can just, like, double lob these grenades at him. Sets him on fire. Does some really good damage. I love the fact that they stick as well. That's very, very nice. Um... That looks like a chest up there to me. So, as I said, we do want to be relatively quick. I like to try and get out of the first stage within about seven minutes. Um, but, you really, you don't have to speed run. You don't have to be super quick. It just means the game's going to be a little easier for you. Um, we got Gorsum. Invisible enemy there, look. I don't know where he went. <laughs> um, Gaul's term is going to mean that enemies will drop some treasure on death occasionally. And that treasure is money. We can use that to open up more chests. Obviously, it's not going to be super common that it drops that, but they will do on occasion. We got any more chests up and around here? Not that I'm seeing. We've got this chest just here. We can use our Jink Jets to reduce our fall damage there. Staying still for one second will give us extra damage. I don't really see that being that useful. Ooh, another chest there. There you go. And I think we're ready to head towards our boss now. Uh, gain 10 arm for 2 seconds upon taking damage. That's really nice. Uh, armor's going to just reduce the amount of damage we take. So after taking a hit, we take less damage from the next hit for a little bit. Increase one-shot protection of your health's maximum of 75% and increase eye frames. Both of those are very, very good. I like that a lot. Yeah, let's make our way towards the boss here. Still don't know what that anvil does. That's uh, that's a bit of a mystery to me. That's new. Dude, this heaviest shot here, this this thing here, the heavy bullets, I'm really liking. I imagine with some high fire rate, these could be very, very good. But I'm, let's see what boss we get here. There's a few different bosses you can get on the first stage. We got actually one of the hardest ones. This is actually a modded boss, the Wayfair. Um, as you can see, it's like a lantern beast thing. There's some enemies based on him, but I've, I've had a really hard time with this guy in the past. So forgive me if I don't do too well against him. I mean, luckily we are doing good damage to him thus far, but... As you can see, my health isn't the best right now. And he has some uh, some homing capabilities that are uh, pretty scary on occasion. You see that little see those little blue shots there that he's firing? You've really got to make sure to get out of the way of those, otherwise they can do a number on you. But we can actually activate this here to create a zone of healing. It's one of the uh, shrines that we can activate. There you go, we got him. That wasn't too bad at all. And we'll get an item for doing that. We actually got the Wayfair's specific item. Every five primary uses, fire a haunted projectile. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five. Ooh, there you go. Look at that, a little projectile. And now we can move to the next stage here. So you can kill the rest of the enemies and try and get some extra loot. But after I've killed the boss, I tend to just like to move on to the next stage. I'm not looking to clear out every stage of every single bit of um, chests and stuff like that. I'll do what I can, but I'm not... I'm not going to obsess over it. You know me with that. I like, same with eyes. Like, I don't sometimes clear every single room. Focus Crystal's going to give us some extra damage up close. That's rather nice. I think we've got a pretty good build so far. Boom. Ooh, we got a Shrine of the Mountain there. That That is risky, but I think I'm going to take it. That is going to spawn two bosses instead of one. But, ooh, that's very nice. A bit of armor reduction. Uh, sorry, health uh, damage reduction, not health reduction. Um... Yeah, so that is going to mean there's two bosses spawn. But at the same time, it mean, means we're going to get two items at the end. So if you can handle it, it's pretty worthwhile. And I think we've actually got a, a reasonably good build for doing this because we've got good AoE. I think over there also is one of the void um, little things here. They will allow you to take corrupted items. But I'm not sure if it's one of the mods that I have or just a vanilla update. But they have changed from when I last used them. Normally, they cost 50% HP and they give you a random corrupted item. And then any future items you get of the same type will also be corrupted. Because in this game, you can stack multiple of the same item. But they've changed so that now you have to select one of the items you already earned to corrupt. So, for example, let's try and corrupt this one. Beaning the air increases your damage by 15% instead of standing still. I much prefer that. And it's corrupted this enemy here. You see this little thing here? We've got to kill it, otherwise it'll corrupt nearby enemies, just like that look. And corrupted enemies do extra damage. They have a, a one-shot protection off, off the bat. They can be pretty pretty gnarly. But yeah, that's that's pretty good. Uh, while I'm wearing mid-air, is that another Shrine of the Mountain? Okay, no, that's just the teleport. <laughs> Sometimes you can get more than one. Um, but that, that's pretty good. Oh, wait, no, wait, what? There's two teleporters. Oh, uh, that one's a broken teleporter. Okay. Is this a modded stage? No, this is from vanilla, I think. I don't know. I'm not sure. This 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 might be a modded stage. That might be why I'm getting broken teleporters and all that sort of stuff. That's some cool visual design. I like it. Got them guys, and then we got a little choice thing here. 
I'm gonna take whatever this is. There's a lot of modded items I don't recognize. For six seconds after hitting or being hit by an enemy, strike with an orbital laser. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is really cool. I mean, it's, it's very delayed, so I, I imagine it's not gonna be the best, but I, it, the cool factor, the cool factor alone is high. We've got a roll of pennies here. Um, I will gamble on that. I lost my focus crystal. Not a good trade, <laughs> but um, yeah, essentially these allow you to trade in a random item of yours for a uh, for the item that's in there, or you can find scrappers that allow you to specifically turn items that you want into scrap. Uh, gain a buff that grants you plus five armor and ten percent healing when picking up an item. It's really good. And what's this do? Gain temporary barrier from all attacks recharges over time. That's also really good. We can do a gamble, fifty percent chance to. Um, Oh, hello. What's this? Increase critical strike damage by 20% and critical strike... Wow. Critical strike damage and chance by 20%. That's really good. That's kind of... That must be quite rare. And we've just actually failed at this a, f a few times. Um, this one here. Is it this one? No. But anyways, th this uh, this thing here, 7.5% chance to get a extra critical strike chance when we fail a shrine. Or is it just when we use a shrine, actually? Um... Just using a shrine. It used to, I think it used to be failing, or maybe it's just changed. Or maybe it's even a completely new item from a different mod pack. But that's pretty good. We're gaining quite a lot of extra crit chance. And considering we just got extra crit damage and extra crit chance from that item that we got, that's pretty good stuff. Okay, we've got a multi-shop over there. I'd very much like to check what's going on in that. And then I think we'll do our boss. We've got to remember, it is two bosses at once. We cannot take this lightly. It is going to be kind of hard. Um, da -da 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 -da. Ooh, grab that. 10% chance to fire an extra shot that has um, low accuracy. Ooh, that was a crit on that as well. Beautiful. Right, let's go and do the boss. We don't have a, an a equipment yet, which is a little uh, a little bit of a shame. Our Q ability. We can get um, active items on occasion. Unfortunately, we haven't got any of those yet. Okay, what, what boss we get? Beetle Queen, luckily, is one of the easiest bosses to get two of. So we should be fine here. I'm basically just going to be spamming all of my abilities at once here um, and trying to take these guys out as quick as I can. You can see that there's these beetle guards that will spawn. Okay, that's one dead. Not a big fan of the amount of beetle guards that have spawned here. That's uh, a little concerning, especially with my current HP. Luckily, we're not doing too bad, actually. We've just got to keep on the move. Make sure that we're not standing any poison or getting hit by these guys too much. Luckily, we've got some piercing and some AoE with our abilities. Um, our little phase shot does pierce, and our grenades obviously have good AoE on them, so not too bad. Oh, dude, there's three of them. <laughs> okay, I was I was just thinking there was two. I did not catch on to the third. Luckily, as I said, Beetle Queen is probably the easiest boss you can get early on, so not too bad at all. These, these junk jets, or jink jets, whatever they're called, are really, really nice for uh, keeping us mobile and keeping us out of harm's way. Okay, we got it. We got two items here. Dude, 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 dude. This is too many enemies. Too many enemies. Okay, I managed to kill a lot of them there. So what do we get here? Activating an interactable against temporary barrier. Often be on maximum health, as well as $8 back. Nice. Okay, so we get 16 back on every activatable, which late game isn't going to matter, but early game is kind of nice. Uh, I wonder if that scales per stage, actually, the money. That'd be interesting if it does, because um, the amount of things cost does scale per stage, so... Still says 8, and then, yeah, that's that's pretty good. Plus 15, we get some good barrier when we purchase things. Oh, activating any interactable, should I say, is not specifically purchasing. We can grab another one of these, actually, for an increased chance... An extra 10% of firing. And as you can see now, we've got some items that are actually stacking up multiple of the same item. Having having this, I do wonder, with that, with that mug shot, whatever it's called, um, sturdy mug, I do wonder if it, when that activates, it contributes towards our lantern item for every five primary uses. Does it count as two primary uses or does it count as one primary use that fired two shots? I'm not entirely sure. I want that orbital laser like item. I want to get like a few more of those to stack that 
like get that stacked up and really see it shine because I think that could be a really really good item. I'm liking the temporary barrier we've got going on here. Beautiful. Oh, there's one of our nuggets. I don't actually know how much they give you, to be honest. Right, let's do some exploring around this side to see if we can uh, seek out a little chest or two. There you go. There's two chests to stay on here. It's always worth checking these little back areas. Because chests can spawn anywhere. It's all randomized. They're not set locations. Activating our equipment, which unfortunately we currently do not have, will give us a bonus of attack speed. I'm sure we'll get some equipment soon, but for right now we are waiting. We've got a drone there. That's an equipment drone as well, actually. Another utility item. Oh, oddly shaped purple is really nice. 100 armor out of combat. Basically, that means whenever we enter combat again, the first hit we take is going to be a massively reduced damage, which is very convenient. Oh, lovely. Increased sprint speed. Movement speed is super, super important in this game, so it's a bit of a shame when you go a really long time without finding it, so I'm glad we've got it. I will take some sticky bombs, thank you. Sticky bombs, 5% chance to attach a sticky bomb. Honestly, our fire rate is pretty low, so I don't know if our chances to stick increases because some some items and skills have different proc coefficients, like the chance of them procking an ability. Um, so we might have a higher proc coefficient because of the slow fire rate, but I'm not entirely sure. Give me that treasure. Actually pretty good. It's like almost 50, I think it was. Uh, this is just flat damage, I think. Yes, 8% damage. Honestly, that's fine. We certainly don't mind a flat damage increase. Oh man, these grenades are awesome. 25% two, damage taken is distributed uh, to you over 2 seconds as bleed. That's interesting. We've got a Luna pod over there for a Luna item. Luna items are items that have an upside and a downside. The problem is there's a lot of modded ones, and you don't get to see what the item does before you pick it up, so we could get a downside that can just ruin your run um, by taking Luna items and not knowing what they do. It'd be nice if this game had some sort of equivalent of external item descriptions to alleviate that a little bit. Okay, ooh, there's a timed chest here. Have I, have I made it in time for this? Nope. <laughs> Se it does say 7.09. I'm way, way, way beyond. God damn. How the hell are you going to make it here in seven minutes? That's crazy. Right, let's go back to the teleporter, I think. We'll open the Luna Pod and see if it's any item we recognize. But if it's a modded item, I'm not going to take it just because I don't want to ruin this first run. I, yeah, I don't even know what that is. Because th there's not an easy way to get rid of lunar items. There is a way, but not an easy way. Oh, we got the, the blue teleporter here. See that little blue thing going around? That means when we defeat the boss, there'll be a new area to go to. And I believe that area is a shop. Right, we do have the magma worm here. Not a particularly hard boss, but with all the other stuff going on right now, it could prove to be kind of difficult. There's a lot of enemies that apply bleed here at the minute, so I'm going to be uh, using my Jink Jets to stay the hell away from those. Those little red guys. Honestly, the grenades are, are, are really the, the powerhouse right now. And we, 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 Even though we haven't been directly attacking the boss, we've been managing to do a good amount of damage to it. Unfortunately, I don't think our grenades stick to the boss because of the way it moves. <laughs> the boss is like moving around everyone. I think that actually stuck then. Ah, oh no, it did, yeah, yeah, that's stuck, that's stuck. Okay, it does work. It's got a very, very small amount of homing. We get ourselves our item, gaining 5% critical chance, and critical strikes increase attack speed. Very nice. And then we can go through this blue portal here, which will take us to a unique shop, where we can buy some extra stuff, which is quite nice. I very much like that idea. Right, one second. Right, let's continue on, baby. Okay, so we're in the shop now. We've come in with 2,600, which is pretty good. From here, we can buy lunar items that you'll be able to see here. We can also get some of these items from the back here as well, which is the main reason I've come here. So we've actually got some legendary items here, and we can afford at least one. So this one, I think I recognize. Uh, Soulbound Classism. I don't know what this is. Crystallized World. Let's give that one a go. Let's give that a whirl. Freeze all nearby enemies for five seconds during the teleporter event. Enemies that are immune to freeze instead, uh, let's have a look, see. Instead, uh, get crystallized, locking all of their skills and rooting them. That cares two times. So that's only going to help us during the teleporter event, which isn't ideal, but we'll take it. 
and we'll take another stack of the predatory instincts and a third stack as well. I, and I still don't really know what to think about this this shop because this whole extra area here is new. Um, it's not what the, is normally in the shop. Um, so I'm always a bit like wary of um, get some more money from that guy as well. Uh, I'm always a little bit wary. I do like the item trades that we can do here. Three random items for that or five random items for that. It's always a bit risky. But it, it, I think I think it's like kind of one of those things where if you're playing on like the, the lower difficulties, yeah, it's probably pretty overpowered. But there's plenty of uh, increased difficulties to play at if you want a more of a challenge and want to make it more balanced. So I don't think it's that bad of an idea. At the minute, I'm not playing on too high of a difficulty, but we can uh, play at higher difficulties later if we end up having a lot of success or the ground temperature begins to rise. Ooh, does that mean that I'm going to have to stay off the ground? Um, or we can uh, add in different modifiers. There's a bunch of modifiers you can add to runs to make them more difficult and interesting. Um, so we could do that. Good amount of money already here. What is this thing? Do not know. It costs us though. Wow, I am uh, I'm on fire and taking quite a bit of fire damage, but that's actually somewhat working in our benefit right now because um, we gained quite a lot of money out of that because of our roll of pennies. So I don't really mind. Right, what the hell does this do? Adrenaline Sprout. Gain regen per missing health when in danger. That's pretty good. That's another one of those corrupted items. Right, let's go up this way. On this stage, there is always a guaranteed legendary chest that normally costs around 3,000-ish, depending on how long you took to get here. So there's a few different locations it can spawn in. I'm just going to go and check those out. One of them is um, just up here. I'm going to quickly go and check that. I don't think it's up here because there's little mushrooms around it typically. And I don't see any of those little mushrooms. But we'll make our way up here anyways. Um, the other place is inside the top of the tree. Which I also don't see a mushroom there. Aha. Here's our mushrooms. It's just down here. You're looking for these glowing little pink purple mushrooms. And you'll find your chest right here. 3,123. That's not too bad. We can definitely afford that. Dude, we need to be really careful about being hit by that guy. That guy can do an insane amount of damage to us. We really need him dead. We need an active item is what we need. The fact that we don't have one yet is, is kind of bad. I've got to basically keep my eye on him all the time because if he gets a shot off on me while I'm already low health, I will die. I'm trying to let my Urple come back. So that if he does hit me, it does a lot less damage. There you go. You see that little bubble around me? That's my Urple. I get 100 armor for my next hit. And it did actually save me there. Okay, we got him. And that gave us enough money for the chest as well. We've got a lot of these big salamander enemies at the moment, actually. And a lot of the regular salamanders as well. This is kind of insane. Whoa! Whoa! I don't know what I did there, but everything just died. Right, so we get a guaranteed legendary here. That's going to be... Headset. Um, after you activate your utility skill, the next five enemies you path across will take... Ooh, damn. After you activate your utility skill, the next five enemies you path across... Your, your path crosses will take 400% damage and stun for five seconds. My utility skill is this one here. So I don't know if that means we have to touch them for that to work. But that's going to be some extra damage coming out on occasion. I definitely don't mind that. Look at the amount of barrier we have right now. Wow. Right, we don't want to go down there yet. We've got one of these over here. I'll take a little time, a uh, little hourglass. All enemies within 18 meters move and attack 20% slower. All projectiles also fly 20% slower. Seems pretty good to me. We'll go for whatever this is as well. A little stopwatch. Not sprinting gradually builds up maximum of 5 charges, increasing your move speed when sprinting by up to 200%. Unfortunately, my only way to not sprint is to uh, hold a different button because I have a setting where I automatically sprint, so it's not ideal, but yeah, we can zoom if we want to. We can zoom if we want to, but yeah, I, I have it set to just automatically sprint all the time. Every 30 seconds, analyze a random enemy, increasing critical strike chance against it by 100% for 7 seconds. You picked the right one there. The adaptive Lemarian is, is good shit. Dude, the amount of barrier we have right now. I'm not quite sure which item it is that's giving us crazy barrier. I think it's um, this one here. 
Grants temporary barrier from all attacks recharges over time. I think it's that one. So that yellow bar you can see in our health there is our barrier. And it basically allows you to go up to double your base HP, which is pretty much what's keeping us alive the entire time right now. That is really, really good. Whoa! Where's this going to take us? Oh, we got a scrapper here. Um... We could potentially scrap some stuff we don't want, although I, I actually don't think there's anything particularly that I really want to get rid of. There's probably a few things, but when you've got this many modded items, it's a little hard to keep track of what you want and don't want, I'll be honest. Um, so keeping an eye on that's not exactly the easiest. So I did see there was a, a chest thing just over here, so I'm going to make my way around. We have some challenge shrines there. They'll just spawn some hard enemies and give us some more money, but this is what I'm looking for. What the hell's this massive thing here? This absolutely giant thing right here. After taking damage, 8% um, chance to stun enemies in 20 meters for one second. Affected enemies are held. Um, da -da 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 -da. I can't find it on my bar. Are held in midair while stunned and slam into the ground for 50% damage. That's not bad. Dude, those grenades are wild. Here's that teleporter event. We've also got some sort of orb on the top of it. I don't know what that's for. Is that telling us where we're going next, maybe? Oh, wow. We might die here. There's a there's a very good chance I die here, because that is quite a number of Elder Lemarians. And there is a blazing one at that. So, if we had more enemies to, to, to kill alongside these guys... Actually, we do now. Lovely stuff. We can build some barrier, and it's going to make this way easier. This is this is not not easy at all. Ooh, that that stun, dude. That that uh, legendary item is very very nice. Was it legendary item the one that stuns while we're uh, doing the teleporter event? Yes, it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a legendary. Item. It's the one we bought. I just couldn't remember picking it up, but it's because we bought it. We didn't actually find it. Dude, this jink jet thing for like dashing around is so nice. I just dashed the wrong way though. Oops. Okay, we've managed to kill most of them now. There you go. Wow, and when they're frozen, we only have to get them down to like 60%, uh, 40% HP and they die. Jumping creates a slowing explosion. Ooh, very nice. We'll keep on going. There's been some good stuff here. There's been some good stuff. I like it. Chest right off the bat, I like it. Ooh, increase attack speed and movement speed. I like to see that. And we've come to the Sunken Terms from the Survivor's DLC. Nice. I like this 100% crit chance thing we got going on here. <laughs> it's rather nice. Um, I don't know what this does, but I'll try and take one of them. Oh my god, let's not bleed ourselves to death right now, though. I don't even know what I took there. Using skills for cooldown gives temporary barrier. Oh, dude. We we have so many ways of gaining barrier right now. It's absurd. The barrier build is uh, is strong with this one. Boom! Bow. Oh, the grenades, man. They're just so good. Two items. We finally, we finally got an active item. We got a good one too. Sawmerang. We just fire a bunch of saws out the front of our face. Leaving combat boost your movement speed by 30%. That's also really nice. Oh, legendary item. No, no. Oh, we got um, increased jump height. Oh. How does that work again? This is a vanilla one, isn't it? Uh, increased jump height. Create a 5 to 100 meter radius of kinetic explosion on hitting the ground. Dealing extra damage. Based on the fall distance. Recharge 10 seconds. Okay, I've got to fall a bit higher than that, I think. But, yeah, there you go. But yeah, we can use our Sawmerang here to do some good damage. Wah, 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 wah. And it'll just uh, like, apply a ton of bleed and stuff as well. Good stuff. Right. We've got speed right now, so let's try and... Uh, let's try and just pick up the chest as fast as we can. Oh, we got one, one of our corrupted items here. Do we see where the teleporter is? Do we see where the teleporter is? Yes, we do. It's all the way over there. Okay. 
This is our final stage before we loop. Now, there is a final boss to this game, but if you don't want to do the final boss, you can instead just loop through to the first stage of the game, uh, which it might not be the same first stage, but the equivalent of the first stage. Um, and then from there, you can then do a thing called obliter obliteration, which essentially means that you can like end your run at a certain stage. I prefer to do that than the final boss, because I feel like the final boss is very different how the regular game normally plays. Uh, I do I do fancy it on occasion, and I do like the Void uh, Crab boss, whatever that one's called. That one's not bad. But the, 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 the regular boss is not, not my cup of tea as much. So we, we, we did change the format of the teleporter there. And then we uh, we get going. We get the source control unit. We've got two of these bad boys. Sawmerang out. Love that. Oh, dude, that one just absolutely got decimated by Sawmerang there. The amount of bleed that applied. I think also, obviously, the grenades are doing a hell of a lot of damage. I'm loving this extra jump height we've got going on here. I'm not really using the, the stomp ability much at all. But um, I am indeed jumping quite high and using it to maneuver around enemies and staying out of harm's way, which is pretty nice. All right, we've made our way to loop here, um, so we are back to the equivalent of the first stage here. So this is the Verdant Falls one, actually. Very nice. Whoa! Okay, land on him. Damn it, I was hoping I could land on him. It's not like a button I've got to like, press to, to, to slam down. I swear there's like a... A slam button. Whoa! I've got this little... What's this little thing in next to my active item? I've got plus 2%. Just constantly says plus 2%. I, I really don't know what that's about. 2.5%? Genuinely have no idea what that is. It's may maybe an item description I didn't see before. Right, now I don't want to stay on the stage too long. I, once I get to loop, I typically don't loot the entire stage. I typically only uh, loot basically what I can see in my vicinity and everything else I kind of leave behind. Because I don't need everything at that point. I mean, I've got a pretty strong build here, right? Oh, we got a mega drone. There, look. Really, really big drone. They can be pretty fun. So let's uh, let's actually go straight to the teleporter here. I saw it over here, didn't I? Yes, I did. Oh, there's another chest right there. The How much are you? 400? Okay, that was pretty easy to get 400, actually. Ooh, you gain the ability to bunny hop, gain air control and jump control. I like that. And we got Stone Titan here. We got probably three of them right. Yeah, I think we got three of them. Honestly, our, our shielding abilities here are absolutely ludicrous. So I don't think we've got too much problem dealing with uh, with these fellas. Sawmerang. Okay. Maybe there's more? Or is this the last one? Dude, I, d I don't know if it's my bunny hop ability, but my, my abilities are knocking me back whenever I jump now, which is slightly weird. I've got 5.5% now. Don't know what it means, but I have 5.5%. Just staying off the ground is so useful. But not getting hit by most enemies. Prevents temporary barrier decay at low health. Oh, dude. Reduces barrier decay. You, you, you can't stop me. My barrier. My barrier is too thick. This has been a lot of fun. <laughs> right, we did get the shop again here. And we have 6,000 to spend. Which isn't a lot, actually. Oh, no. Doesn't matter. I fell. I think that means we're out of the shop now. I'm not entirely sure. We'll see. No, we're good. Okay. Okay. How much are things going to cost here? ATG missile launcher. Okay, we're going to get two of those. We get one of those as well. A USB drive. I could trade in five random green items for this, and I'm going to do exactly that. I don't know what I lost, but we get a USB stick. The Atlas cannon appears each stage. Activating deals 40% of maximum health. Um, ooh, where'd that go? A 40% of maximum health as damage to the teleporter boss after it spawns. Hmm. Oh, I fell again. Oops. Shortcut. 
Now we can get gone. Interesting item. Not probably not worth the items that I traded for it. In all honesty, but I think in the uh, in the spirit of experimentation and trying new things, it's it's worthwhile. Oh, we got a void crab enemy here. The void has become curious. Dude, he almost killed me. Shit. So I'm guessing void has become curious just means we've got a lot of void enemies on this stage. Void enemies are much tougher and they have a few instant kill abilities. This guy, when he dies, fires out this uh, little blob thing that moves towards you. And the crab guy, uh, this one, just has a stationary version of the same thing. So yeah, this this guy fires that thing. Look, that orb there. It, I, I'm not sure if it's a guaranteed instant kill, but it does do a bloody lot of damage. And then this guy will do the same thing in a larger radius, but like in one location. That's that. What's what's this thing? Is this is this uh, something that I can interact with? It is. It's the Atlas Cannon. Okay, cool. So, when we activate this, it'll do 40% of the boss's health straight away, I'm assuming. Void Devastator, hello. Yeah, there you go, look, look at that. Absolutely insane amount of damage there. Unfortunately, it only affects one of them. Oh, no, no, it doesn't. It affects both of them. Okay, that is very strong. It's actually way better than I thought it would be, especially late game. Early game, I wouldn't really rate that. But late game, that's pretty good. That's uh, that's a rather large thingy here. The shurikens here, and we're off to the next stage. Right, last stage. This is where we get to um, obliterate ourselves, dude. This stage goes way higher than I thought it did. I didn't realize things spawned up top. Pretty cool. Okay, so just to note, it's it's, it's not happened this time, but there's a bug with this stage on occasion with one of the mods I'm using. Uh, that is a mod that I do not want to disable, where sometimes this stage will just spawn with no teleporters, no chests, nothing to interact with. The only thing you can do is kill enemies and you can't escape the stage. So I've installed uh, the console commands uh, mod so that I can skip stages if that happens to me. Hopefully we won't ever have to see that, but there is a potential chance that will happen at one point, so just be aware if we keep the series going. Oh, hello, Grove Tender. Where'd you come from? Wasn't paying much attention to you, was I? Man, <laughs> this is so much fun. The absolute craziness we're unfolding here. I'm really liking our abilities. The one thing we didn't really get is we didn't get a lot of attack speed. We have attack speed on activating our active item, which is nice. We have three stacks of that. But that's it, really. Got a storm approaching. Oh, dude, did I just fire two grenades at once there? I need to have a look at my Sturdy Mug and see if that was that what did that. Sturdy Mug, where are you? I've lost Sturdy Mug. There it is. All projectile attacks. Okay, I thought it was literally only your primary ability that was affected by that. Oh, dude, I need to kill some stuff really quick, otherwise I'm going to die. Dude, that guy is that guy's wrecking me right now. I need to go. The fact that, that can double is really, really nice. Wow, that was kind of that was kind of sketchy. Just about made it out of that alive. Teleport events all the way at the tippy top up here. So you can see this one's got an orb flying around it, but it's not a blue orb. It's like a white teal sort of orb, rather than the other one. Ah, oh, really? It's a tough boss to get late game. But, oh, dude, I didn't... No, no, no. I was just about to say it'll get killed. I'd never found my laser. I never found it. So I didn't get the advantage there. My Sawmerang did a lot of damage there, though, so that's good. But these guys are rough. I'm just, like, literally spamming my abilities and hoping my grenades kill him. That freezing's very, very nice. Oh, dude, the minigunner, the minigunner, the knockback on that guy. Get ready with another Sawmerang in a second. 
Dude, this minigunner guy needs to go. They're so strong. Look at the amount of damage he's doing to me. Fuck, 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 fuck. There's so many of them. There's... I'm dead. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. Okay, get in there and saw meringue real quick. That was so close. The amount of different status effects we're applying right now is insane. There it is, there it is, boys, there it is. Get in there, get in there. I did it, I did it. Just don't die, just don't die. Oh my goodness. Those gunners are insane. I think I did it. Yeah, I did it, good. Okay, okay. Now I've just got to make it to the end of this little winding path, and we can finish off our run with an obliteration the way I like to do it. But yeah, um, if you guys want to see me do the boss more, or want to see me do the void boss, then let me know, because I can do them. I just I just prefer this bo uh, this way of ending the game, just because it's a bit more... Like, for one, the runs are normally a bit shorter, which I think is good for YouTube. Um, I tend to not want to do videos that are much over an hour, um, and sometimes the boss runs can be a little over that, depending. It, it, it really depends, really, on how powerful your run is. Sometimes these ones can be longer. It kind of depends. Um, but I, I just prefer these ones... Obliteration. There you go. We have obliterated and we have completed a run. I hope you guys did enjoy this and please do let me know by liking and commenting if you want to see more Risk of Rain 2 modded in the future. And yeah, hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.